This is Inside Town Hall, a behind-the-scenes look at city government and the issues affecting you and your family. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Inside Town Hall. I'm your host, Madeline Shields. Coming up on the program, we learn about the new Foundation Park. It's a new development area that is bringing economic growth to the city of Sioux Falls. We'll have those stories and much more when we return. Hi, my name is Kathy Cachigaro with Falls Community Health. Sexually transmitted infections are hitting South Dakota at record levels, and the sad thing is that they are completely preventable. Female birth control does not protect against these infections, so it is important to use a condom in addition to birth control, especially if you have a new partner, have multiple partners, or if you think your partner is sexually active with other people. You should always ask a new partner about their sexual history before you have sex. If you are concerned about sexually transmitted infections, please call your doctor's office about getting tested. Well, there's a new economic development park in Sioux Falls, and here to talk about it is City Councilor Dean Karski and his guest, Slater Barr, the president of the Sioux Falls Development Foundation. Thank you for joining us for Inside Town Hall. First off, let's talk a little bit about what is the Sioux Falls Development Foundation and how does the city of Sioux Falls um, work with this entity? I guess I'd like Slater to tell you a little bit about what um, the Development Foundation is and how they were founded and that type of thing. Sure. So we're a little over 60 years old now, founded in 1954 by a group of businessmen in the community, really on the philosophy that, you know, their individual businesses will do better if the community grows and thrives, then so will their businesses. In the early days, it was uh, just totally a uh, kind of marketing and support organization. Um, back in the 70s, when the Aris Data Center project came along, it really advanced in sophistication and added professional staff and started in the business of developing industrial parks. Okay. And you can tell by his accent, Slater's not a local guy. We brought him in. We... Yeah, I'm from South Sioux Falls. Yeah. <laughs> Way South. Way South, yeah. <laughs> and how long have you been in the city? Uh, seven years now. Okay. So. Well, you can talk a little bit about, you know, how do we fare in terms of um, economic development in the city of Sioux Falls compared to other places you've been? Well, you know, I think that the, uh, the, the proof is in the pudding. You know, if you look at rankings of economies throughout the United States, Sioux Falls is ranked as the eighth strongest local economy in the entire nation out of every MSA in the, in the, in the nation. And if you look at who we are playing in, you know, the arena that we're playing in, uh, they're all much, much larger cities than us. Let's talk a little bit about Foundation Park. That's the new economic development park in the city of Sioux Falls. Explain what that is, who are you trying to attract, and how did this come about? Sure. Foundation Park really started about three years ago. The Development Foundation was approached by a site selection consultant representing a very, very large international manufacturer. He had a project massive in scale, um, half a billion dollars in capital investment, up to a thousand jobs, uh, a real game changer in bringing that scale of manufacturing to the community. But it had certain requirements. They needed to be uh, have access to interstates. They needed to have redundant electricity. They needed to have rail. And so when you started looking at what the opportunities that Sioux Falls had to compete for that project, it inevitably led us to one location, and that's this northwest quadrant of I-90 and I-29. We went after the project, ended up um, optioning up several hundred acres as we chased it, and then as sometimes these projects do, their own internal analysis of their market conditions led them to put the project on hold. So then we had several hundred acres under option and we were deciding what to do with it. We decided that the things that they found so attractive about that location, other companies would find attractive too. And so we kept on moving until we had assembled 820 acres um, in what is now known as Foundation Park. And just in the last city council meeting, we annexed or did the pre-annexation agreement for Foundation Park in the land out there. That is part of the Northwest District, the district that I represent on the on the city council. It's important to know too that this is the only park of its type in the state of South Dakota. What we have there with rail and like Slater said, the redundancies in infrastructure makes this a very attractive park, not 
I mean internationally, not just regionally. So it, it will be a game changer to our community eventually. Okay, this planning started three years ago. Where are we right now? Do you have um, businesses that are willing to locate in that or have they already? Yeah, so we've been pre-selling the development for quite mm -hmm. some time, you know, throwing the concept out to companies that were interested in, um, um, you know, in the characteristics of the park. Uh, we thought that there would be um, significant demand uh, from out-of-state prospects, uh, other com you know, companies looking to move in. We've been surprised as well by interest from our own local companies here mm -hmm that are looking for larger sites, bigger footprint, rail access, those, the, you know, the two interstates, access to both interstates. All that is proving to be um, very exciting, I think, not only to us, but to the companies that we work with. So right now we have three companies that have signed letters of intent. We have a fourth that has a letter of intent under review. Um, letters of intent are not as uh, binding as a purchase agreement, say. But, and we won't be able to convert those into purchase agreements until annexation is completed, uh, until we get to the point where we're able to plat when a subdivision plan is approved and so forth. Mm -hmm. But we're reaching that point rapidly. The business that got the ball rolling to begin with that put their project on hold, is there any chance that they may start up again and choose the site? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we stay in touch with the consultant that represents the company. We let them know about our progress. Could come back, it may never come back. But uh, I think that from the interest that we're seeing right now, it's very clear to us that the decision to move forward with this park was the right one. It's important to note that what the foundation or the development foundation does it doesn't always have a six month window. I mean, it, it's six years, 10 years, and we really have to be looking forward. Uh, the city has to be in on it. The Governor's Office of Economic Development, I think it would be fair to say, is all in on the work yeah, that's being, being done out here. Um, this was a $20 million investment just in land alone. Um, there's a lot of moving parts to it, and everything's coming together nicely. We just um, bringing in the right tenants and um, helping better our entire community, basically. So is this land, um, will you expand? Are you trying to, to get more acreage in there? And how do you, where does the money come for, from to purchase this land? Sure. So we're right, right now, we're not looking to expand any further. That may happen at some point in the future. Uh, but right now, 820 acres is about as much as we can bite off. You know, the model for the Development Foundation has historically been industrial parks in the 200 acre range. So this is, you know, three to four times the size of, of what we've typically undertaken. Uh, in order to do that, we really needed the partnership of everyone, city, uh, the state. Um, so uh, the Governor's Office of Economic Development, they were willing to make a $3 million grant to us to help us acquire the land and then $8.5 million in low interest loans. The rest of it is our own cash and uh, our own debt financing that we've secured through conventional sources such as banks. What other businesses could you do you foresee coming to this area? Well, I think that it's going to be attractive to manufacturing. Uh, certainly, it's a heavy industrial park, so it's able to accommodate not only light assembly, light manufacturing, but you know, heavier manufacturing that could take advantage of that rail that is, that is there. The other companies that are showing a lot of interest in it are logistics related companies. The transportation characteristics of BNSF's uh, class one rail service on the site, the two interstates, and plus, you know, it's very, very close to the airport. So you put all that together and it really makes a nexus of transportation opportunities. What do you see uh, as the city's role in helping, um, I guess, get more businesses interested in possibly coming to this area? Well, the Development Foundation truly is a, a membership organization, and the city of Sioux Falls is a member of that. We do pay our membership dues, $175,000 a year to belong to the Development Foundation. But by that belonging, we also have a place at the table um, with what goes on. We have somebody on the board, we're, we're represented, represented there. So we have a very big part to play um, when it comes to how the money is spent, 
who we're attracting or, and how things are done. And it doesn't end, you know, when the land is annexed. We have the infrastructure. The city has to make sure that we can get the water, the sewer, and all the other things that make this stuff go come together. So, Do you see um, a timetable when this might be a booming uh, neighborhood, I guess? Well, the timetable is proven to be much faster than we ever anticipated because of the interest that we mm -hmm. have. You know, with these companies that are looking to go there, I think that, uh, you know, uh, once winter ends and we're able to get into construction mode again, I think you'll see grading taking place there. You'll start to see road work uh, underway in order to provide access to the site. And, uh, you know, maybe as late as uh, next summer, you know, you may start to see uh, actually some of these actual prospects starting to work on their own facilities. Where, where we're talking about here, just to put it in perspective, is we're, we're about half a mile north of Walmart up on the North Marion Road. And that's where this comes off of is North Marion Road. Um, people are going to want to start living in the areas that um, they work. So I see um, residential really taking off even more than it has been in the past. So um, we, we see a lot happening up here. That was one of my other questions. You talk about manufacturing, heavy manufacturing, light manufacturing, but is there room for maybe a hotel up there or restaurants or because if there are people working there, they don't want to drive, you know, 15, 20 mm -hmm. minutes to go eat lunch. Is that something that local entrepreneurs might say, hey, once these businesses start developing there, maybe this is a place for my small business to go? Yeah, absolutely. And there's, mm -hmm. there's probably a couple of locations for them to consider. You know, we have reserved a strip along Marion Road, um, um, kind of embedded right there in the Foundation Park itself for commercial, just for exactly what you're saying. Some of those services that will need to be provided to all the employees uh, uh, of the park. The other opportunity, as Dean alluded to, is just south of there, is that Walmart development. That's also a development foundation development. We typically don't get involved in retail, but saw the opportunity in that particular location to uh, generate additional margins that we can then flip into industrial development, such as uh, Foundation Park. So uh, we thought that made sense, and if we're able to attract Walmart there, uh, there's multiple opportunities for hotels, for restaurants, for other shopping um, at that location as well. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about workforce development. We'll have that and much more in just a moment. Cleaning sidewalks after a snowstorm helps ensure the safety and mobility of our entire community. This is important especially for senior citizens and people with disabilities. What's inconvenient to you might be dangerous or even life-threatening to them. Be sure to shovel your sidewalk edge to edge, and if your property has a curb ramp, be sure to clear that entirely as well. Residents and businesses alike must clear their sidewalks within 48 hours after the end of a snowfall or face possible citations. Do your part to keep Sioux Falls safe. Welcome back to Inside Town Hall, where we are visiting with City Councilor Dean Karski and his guest, Slater Barr, who is the president of the Sioux Falls Development Foundation. Thanks for being with us. Let's turn our focus to uh, workforce development. Let's talk a little bit about what exactly that is. You bet. In very broad and, and encompasses, <laughs> you can go so many different directions with workforce development. Uh, in the 2015 budget, the City Council unanimously approved a half a million dollars for workforce development. And we took um, different organizations petitioned for some of that money. It was a grant, basically. Um, 50000 of that went to the Sioux Falls Development Foundation. It's important to note, too, that the Sioux Falls Development Foundation is a nonprofit organization. They were able to use that money, and basically, they're, and as part of the process, a long range game changing plan. And Slater can go into more of the details on that, but that's how we started this out. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, you know, economic development is, uh, a, as you said, a very all encompassing term. And we can recruit all the businesses that we want to. We can help companies expand all we want to. But the flip side of that is that the people have to be there and they have to have the skill sets required by those businesses in order for all this to work. So the business uh, expansion and recruitment has to be matched equally 
with workforce development. We have such a strong and robust economy that you know we're all aware that uh, all of our businesses could do more if they had more people, if they had uh, to to meet the you know the opportunities that are presented to them. And so, as we started digging into this, we quickly realized it was a very very complex, complicated situation, and there were all these voices out there that you know, had insights into specific pieces of it, but it's a, it's a very big picture. So at, through Ford Sioux Falls, we worked and hired a firm called Market Street Services out of Atlanta that specializes in strategic planning uh, and economic development and asked them to do a deep dive into our workforce, what the trends are, what does our future look like, um, and, and really to help us develop a strategy in order to uh, have a sound game plan moving forward in our community and our workforce. So what, this is when a low unemployment rate is really not very good when you're trying to attract businesses. Where are we lacking? Is it not enough people or not enough training or a combination of both? I think it's a combination of both. <clears throat> you know, the... Uh, um, you know, Sioux Falls is being so successful, and we are adding jobs and people in all these positions that are needed. One of the things that surprises people when I talk to them about, you know, we basically doubled the amount of welders in our community over the past just few years, you know, and yet we still hear the hue and cry for welders. Well, it's just because we are being so successful, we're creating jobs quicker than we have people to fill them. So, you know, when you look at a strategy like this, you know, we looked at everything and they kind of, we came up with 11 strategies, ultimately, uh, that, are, that are kind of categorized into two areas. Workforce development, where you're trying to align the people in our community with the jobs that are gonna be here now and in the future, and workforce attraction, bringing people in. And then there's some that are areas of overlap. Yeah, I think it's important to note too, you know, when we talk about workforce development, Sioux Falls has been very successful in the financial services industries and in, in healthcare, ob two obvious ones, but you know, we really need to have a diverse workforce. We need jobs in all the different career fields, blue collar, white collar, um, at all skill sets and levels. And um, if it's a $30,000 a year entry level job or a $75,000 a year management job, I mean, we're trying to look at the entire spectrum of where people come and how they come into our community. How does our education system um, play a part in that? We have, you know, the Technical Institute, um, you know, does that help? And do you work with those um, agencies to recruit and train people? Yes, in fact, it's a crucial cog in that whole process. Um, some of the money that we set aside, that half a million dollars, was to go to the um, career and technical um, development. So yeah, we can't do it without the high schools, without Southeast Tech, um, without the local colleges. Um, they're, they're crucial in this process. Yeah, absolutely. And then recruiting from out of state, is are you um, doing that? And how do you get them here when we have four feet of snow on the ground? Yeah, <laughs> actually, we've, and we've already started along those lines uh, just this past year. You know, we work with a public relations firm that represents our community, helping us get stories about Sioux Falls out across the nation. And we've been very, very successful in generating a lot of publicity about Sioux Falls. You know, last year we came back to them and said, you know what, we have to weight this equally and we need to be as much about talent attraction as we are about business attraction. So let's split our efforts half and half. So this plethora of stories that you've seen hitting from uh, publications like the Huffington Post, uh, the Daily Meal, those are a result of those efforts where we're bringing reporters to the community. They're talking about our quality of life, our restaurants, uh, our entertainment, you know, all of that. All those things that someone considering a move to Sioux Falls are going to Google find those articles and go, hey, this place looks like uh, this wouldn't be a bad place to move to. I think it's important to know, too, that our younger people don't 
look for a job and then move to a community, mm -hmm. they look for a community, then they look for a job. Mm -hmm. So the things that Sioux Falls, those amenities, entertainment, um, bike trails, all those for things sure. really are critical to, to attracting those people. Mm -hmm. And the park system, I know that, you know, that, that has played a role as well that they use in, in um, commercials and things like that. You know, I was with an individual from Minneapolis here in the last two weeks and um, he said, I hear your advertisements all the time. He said, they're done well. And he said, keep running them. They're, they're good. Mm -hmm. So we, <laughs> I was coming from a Minneapolis neighbor, native. So. All right. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And, thank you. and uh, thanks later. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more with Councillor Karski. We'll be back in just a moment. What? We're finally on our way to India and you still don't know any of the common words and phrases? Remember when I told you you should check out Mango Languages? I've been using it and I've been studying up on my Hindi. I tried Mango and I tried some books but nothing seemed to work for me and I'm going to cram on the plane so I even brought... Good idea! I'll fire up the app. Oh, Mango's the name of the... You brought a bag of fruit with you, didn't you? <sighs> Learn more about how you can use Mango at www.sulandlib.org. Welcome back to Inside Town Hall, where we are visiting with Councillor Dean Karski. Uh, this, sadly, is your last Inside Town Hall show because you uh, have run out of, of term limits on the City Council. Let's talk a little bit about um, how you began and why you began as a City Councilor. You bet. I guess that goes back to 2008 when I ran for City Council, at, probably even before that when Darren Smith resigned from the City Council. I was one of the applicants um, for the Council along with Michelle Erpenbach, Bob Litz, and Jerry Noonan and others that um, Bob Litz was eventually appointed to. I ran against him in 2008. I did fairly well. He was the incumbent. He got reelected to the council from that appointment and then a few years later he ran for county auditor and got elected to county auditor so I applied again for the position and I was successful in the appointment. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that I did run and I did show that people would vote for me and that the people knew who I was. How does that work when you're filling someone else's term that is vacating? Do you have to have an election or it's well, an appointment? Well, technically the election is that done by the City Council. Um, probably a lot more difficult election than going out <laughs> on a public election. <laughs> You've only got seven people to campaign for, so it was um, a lot more personal. Um, but at, because I filled part of a term, that counts as a full four-year term, even though I was only on there for one year. So you've been a City Councilor for five years. Yep, this and, is my fifth. Okay, then would you could sit out and you could come back how many years would you have to sit out? You have to sit out one two-year two. term. Okay. So technically I could run again in 2018. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you have accomplished while you've been on the City Council um, and what I guess what are some of the things you're most proud of? You bet and you know being a City Councilor there's it's hard to say it, individual accomplishments. We do it, we're a group of eight, and anything the city council does, you do as a group. Um, it's just the way it works. A few of the things that I was personally involved in that I was very happy to see happen, while I was chair of the fiscal committee, we did the um, pension reform, and that resulted in a very, it had to go to the um, city employees. They overwhelmingly supported it, their union did. Um, it will result in a savings of over 25 years of roughly $130 million. Um, that was huge. Um, on the other side, we did spend about $115 million on an event center, so maybe things all come out evenly. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we had the event center, we had the, the pool, we've had projects that have been going on and being discussed for literally decades. And it 
nice to be part of the group where we were able to get those things done. Yeah, actually in the last five years you do have a brand new aquatic center that's going in. Um, the event center that is bringing um, economic development as well as you know big concerts and do you think a lot of people are staying in the city of Sioux Falls instead of traveling out of town to attend those events? Undoubtedly. Mm -hmm. you, you can't go really too many other places and have the level or the quality of entertainment that we've brought to Sioux Falls and the events that are selling out uh, the number of people that are attending these events has just been a boon to our economy and it's not just the local residents that are benefiting from it but you know our, our entire region. Talk a little bit about running for public office. Do you, uh, would you encourage other people to do that and is it scary at first? It's you know? intimidating. I don't know about scary, but it's intimidating. There's a lot to do. There's, um, mm -hmm. you, you, it's really about. I talked to several people recently. We have a city council election coming up. Interested candidates. I tell them invest in three things, and the third thing you invest in is a good pair of shoes because you're going to be out knocking on a lot of doors. You're going to get to know people, and you better really have a commitment to the community and to improving the community and doing it for the betterment of all, and not just for yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, you know, people have to actually be an expert in some field to be able to run for an elected office? In fact, I would say probably better to have a broad base of knowledge than to just be very centered on any one specific thing. Um, you know, everybody brings something to the table. I've got a long background in insurance and financial services. Um, we, we're a diverse group. There's eight different people at that table, and everybody's going to bring something to that, that council. So I guess your advice would be if people, you know, you don't have to be an expert in water reclamation or sewer systems. Or, or zoning <laughs> or, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, Just um, have a commitment to the community, want to be part of a prop being a a part of the solution than part of the problem. Okay. Well, and you have a family here in Sioux Falls, so it's not like you're not going to be out. Wait, I bet your wife has, what, a honey-do list 10 miles long for you to do once you're finished here? You know, the time commitment to the council is, um, while it's not slight, it, in fact, it's probably more than what some people would want to take on, um, with my family in town, I've got been married 31 years, and. Uh, three kids in the community, a grandchild, a second grandchild on the way. Um, you know, it's just been part to, I'm proud to say that I've been part of what's going on here. And um, my wife has been very supportive in what I've been doing. Great. Well, what's next for you? Next for me, I am term limited out in May. There's a primary in June for the county commission, the Minnehaha County Commission. Uh, my grandfather ran for county commission where I grew up. I've had it that's always been on my radar I and mean, I've discussed it often so that is what I'll be looking at next. So you're going to look at running for office again. So Correct. it must not be too intimidating if you're willing to jump in again. <laughs> to the next level, yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, city council and county commission are vastly different, mm -hmm. but they work together so in so many ways and um, I, I'm ready to step up to that next challenge. Okay, well that's great. But you're not off the hook yet. You're still in office till we, May 10th. So yes. if, if people want to get a hold of you, if they have questions or concerns about anything, how do they get contact you? You know, Sioux .org website. Click on City Council. You can click on any one of our pictures to get a hold of us, email us. Um, our phone numbers are there. You call that number, it'll ring to my cell phone. And that's the other thing. You know, I, I would have thought that I'd get more calls from constituents and I, it, it doesn't happen very often. And when it does, you know, it's, I'm happy to step in and do what I can to help people out. Has it been fun? Oh, it's been a blast. I love it. I, I truly enjoy the community service and the, the, the level at which you can be part mm -hmm. of the solution. All right. Well, great. Well, good luck. And like I said, this is your last time on Inside Town Hall, but you will be seeing him around again in, uh, in the city of Sioux Falls. And again, he will still be in office until May 10th. Correct. All right. Well, if you have any questions or concerns or want to get a hold of any of your city councilors or if you have uh, want to know what's going on in the city of Sioux Falls, you can go to SiouxFalls.org. You can sign up for email alerts and texting alerts. You can even find out when there are snow alerts out there. So be sure to go to SiouxFalls.org for all of your information. Thanks, Councilor Karski, for joining us. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. That's our time for Inside Town Hall.